welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a video inspired by Andrea Matiliano. She is a bigger creator here on the platform and I love her channel. I've been watching her for a long time. Fun fact, she now follows me on YouTube and Instagram. Like, seriously, how? <laughs> <laughs> she's unproblematic, she has thorough reviews, she's on the ColourPop PR list, I just love her videos. She's also been on this like low buy journey last year which really inspired me to be more conscious of my purchases and she last year bought like one palette a month. Of course she did get PR and stuff like that but I still thought it was very very cool that somebody with almost 500,000 subscribers on YouTube could sustainably do that and like still create you know regular content on YouTube that is super super cool to me so anyway she did a video recently called I think 10 older palettes that she wishes she could buy or like her 10 like older palettes that are still on her wish list and I thought that was a really cool idea then I saw my friend Amy do it I saw my friend Sid do it here on YouTube so I'll try and remember to link all of the videos I'm referencing down in my description box if I forget remind me I'm sorry you guys oh, sometimes I get so busy and I seriously like edit upload schedule and like forget <laughs> and then like if you guys notice sometimes my video like my end screen isn't done and then I'll be at work like quickly trying to like add like suggestion <sighs> listen YouTube is it's a full-time job don't don't let anyone tell you it's not it's a lot of work if you upload consistently anyway we love it we do it because we love it so here I am I thought this was so so fun so let me go ahead and get into my list of 10 older palettes that I really wouldn't mind owning, but I'm trying not to be a savage this year, so I probably won't get all of these. So let's get into it. So the first palette I have on my list, this is so funny because I think this palette is, I don't know, when it first came out, I'm like, oh my God, seriously, Urban Decay, like get it together. And it's the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette. And I solely blame this on Teresa is Dead. Teresa is Dead is bad for my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> I love her so much. She's so fun to watch, you guys. If you haven't checked out her channel yet, I don't know what you're doing with your life. She is so funny. I got to meet her in New York. And yeah, I just like treasure all those memories. So anyway, she raves about the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette. And honestly, like she's definitely made me want to buy it. I had an Ulta coupon recently and it was like in my cart. And um that whole like purchase didn't end up panning out so I didn't buy it but I definitely have been like giving it the side eye I'm like do I need it I'm like oh I could create such great neutral looks with it it's like every excuse in the book has run through my mind but I won't buy it but I think it's beautiful and yeah it's gorgeous okay <laughs> next one this one I was like whoa yeah if I had all the money in the world I would buy these these are the Natasha Denona like $230 eyeshadow palettes you guys know which ones I'm talking about the funny thing is and the reason I really am not like a hundred percent committed to buying them first of all the price tag honestly like I'm a savage you guys know this I've bought ridiculous things like I bought the freaking Pat McGrath foundation which I still regret to this day and I have all of the, like the mothership palettes and all that jazz so I'm not like I'm not completely in control of things sometimes but 230 is where I just like mm, like ooh, I could get a really nice purse for that so and the thing about those palettes is I love the shades but they're not like my absolute favorite like the green I love greens but then it doesn't have enough of those like vibrant greens in it so I can like stay away and then I love purples and blues but then I don't love them enough to have a $230 palette you know what I mean so they're beautiful I wish I could own them but the price tag definitely keeps me in check which is great okay the next palette is the melt Gemini palette and I've definitely contemplated purchasing this especially because melt always has a very good sale around holidays so I think they did a pretty decent sale when they even did their like um, their holiday collection I think the Gemini palette was on sale 
and I totally contemplated buying it. I just think it's such a beautiful color store. You guys know I love grungy shades, especially green shades, but that's the thing. I have those shades. I've talked myself out of the Gemini palette before because I have the Kaleidos green palette, which is stunning. It's not as big as the Gemini palette, but it really has the core colors that attract me to the Gemini palette. And I also have the Give Me Glow Juicy Olive palette. So as much as I would love to add another all Olive grungy tone palette to my collection. I need to stay strong. The other thing is Melt is so hit or miss with their formulas. I know a lot of people had trouble with the Gemini palette. I think my friend Amy, her palette got moldy at some point. And so like all of those reasons are really good things to keep in mind when it comes to me not buying that palette. I also think it's a little bit of an older palette, so it's not like I'm gonna get like crazy amounts of views on YouTube or anything if I do purchase it, but I do think it's a pretty color story. And in a different lifetime, if money was not a issue and I could just buy whatever I want, I would maybe consider picking that one up. So the next palette is the ColourPop Mint To Be palette. And I don't think this is necessarily an old palette, but it's about two months old at this point. I think came out sometime in January, if I'm not wrong. So I feel like I'm on a journey with ColourPop. Okay, so to start the story from the beginning, I have been wanting to declutter my single eyeshadow palette. So I bought these big palettes from Colored Rain and I had picked up a few ColourPop palettes, you know, their um, like single eyeshadow palettes. I picked up a few of those and I was like, I didn't feel like I had a lot of ColourPop single shadows. Well, once I put them all into a Colored Rain palette, it filled a whole Colored Rain palette and I was just like, what the heck? So it was a little bit scary and honestly, every time I dip into their single eyeshadows, I don't love the formula. It's not bad but it's not my favorite. And I just have so many beautiful single shadow formulas like JD Glow, Colored Rain, Sydney Grace, like the indie brands kill the single shadow game. So I'm like, why am I holding on to like 90 something single eyeshadow pans from ColourPop? So I'm on a journey to just not really buy a lot of ColourPop eyeshadow palettes. They're nice, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to shit on ColourPop, it's just that I, have formulas in my collection that I like more than ColourPop, especially their neutral palettes. I feel like I buy them and then I'm like absolutely just like unexcited. Like the Flutter collection, like the butterflies that they did, I bought that purple palette and I used it on my eyes one time and I just didn't love it. And I was like, why am I doing this to myself? I'm very much on a ColourPop no buy journey this year. I just want to like admire it and just like forget about it because I just never end up using my ColourPop stuff and I'm happy with the stuff I have like I really like some of the palettes I have from them but I haven't purchased from them in a hot second and I want to keep it that way so the mint to be the color story really attracts me but I don't know like I don't know what those shades are going to look like on my eyes and right now I just don't want to pay full price plus shipping for that palette so it's on my wish list, maybe someday, but right now is not the time. So yeah, that's that. The next thing, these are funny because they are pretty old. They're the Kevin Aquan palette. So there were two of them. There was like a mauve nude one, and then there's like a neon, I don't know, there was like a colorful palette. I'll throw up pictures of all the palettes I'm talking about. Obviously I don't have them, but I think Mel Thompson raves about the mauve one. And I mean, Kevin Aquan is like one of those like, high-end brands and not like overly expensive but I think of him or that brand as like the Charlotte Tilbury tier you know a little bit more like grown-up makeup and um yeah just honestly just hearing how much Mel likes that palette and I think also Lauren May Beauty I think raves about those palettes as well so I don't know the shimmer shades just look so beautiful and like they just glide onto your eyes. So I've just been so curious about that formula and I hope that they do something new. I don't necessarily wanna go back and buy an old palette, but I'm curious to see if they come out with a new eyeshadow palette for 2020. That would be really cool. The next palette on my list, this is so funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna buy this one, but 
let me tell you, it's on sale at Sephora and it has tempted me many, 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 many times. And it is the Kat Von D Alchemist Holographic Palette. Now, I have plenty of beautiful iridescent multichromes. I think the Alchemist palette was definitely ahead of the curve um, because it came out quite a while ago. I want to say, what, is that palette like two, three years old at this point? But it's on sale for $10 at Sephora and it tempts me so, so often. I'm like, oh, let me just buy it. Like, it's $10. And then Kat Von D got canceled, so that was enough reason for me to stay away because I was like, I'm not going to be able to get any use of it on my channel. People are going to have like a conniption, so I'm not going to get it. But yeah, secretly I've wanted that palette for a very long time. So I'm just going to tell you guys that I've wanted it for a long time, but I'm not going to buy it. I've stayed strong for a very, very long time and I'm very proud of myself. You guys, I'm not as savage as I sometimes seem, just so you guys know when it comes to makeup. So yeah, that is on there. Number seven, this is funny because I thought this was boring, but if I, again, had 65 extra dollars to spend on a palette that I might use like once a year, I would buy this. This is the Pat McGrath Blitz Astro Quad. Astral Quad. Um, this was the quad that came out during the holidays. And the funny thing is I bought the other two. I bought the blue and the pink. But I didn't buy this one because I was like, oh, I have those shades. But everyone that I watch review those quads says the neutral one is the best one. So I'm like kicking myself because I really ended up not liking the pink one. The blue one is really fun. I could have used it today, actually. I could have used this on for this look. Anyway, so <laughs> I, yeah, I kind of low-key regret bu not buying the neutral because I think it would have been fun to incorporate into my makeup routine, but honestly, I don't need it. It's okay. It's nice. I can admire it from a distance, but yeah, I'm like, hmm. When I was making this list, I was like, there wasn't a lot of palettes that I don't already own, um, but yeah, I could definitely see myself owning this palette now, but I won't buy it. I won't buy it. The next one is the only Fenty Snap Shadow Palette that I wanted. It was the one, I think it's number seven, Cadet. It's the one with the grungy green and the grungy mustardy colors totally calling to me because I'm so into, again, those grungy shades. Even though today I look like spring threw up all over my face. Um, yeah, so I was really into that particular palette. I think they're like 25 bucks and Honestly, they didn't get the best reviews on YouTube, so that was enough to keep me away from them. And again, I'm on this like low buy journey situation, so even more reason to stay away. And yeah, I kind of watched Mel Thompson's review on them, and I was I was okay with not owning that palette, but I did really really love the color story of that particular little. Shadow Palette from Fenty Beauty. Okay, so the next one that I would buy, if I could buy older palettes, is the BH Cosmetics Crystal Zodiac Palette. This one was really hard to say no to, but I just didn't need it. So I own the two um, Zodiac Palettes from BH, the original, and the Love Signs. I never use them. I hardly use any BH palettes that I buy. Like I buy them and then their shipping takes so long. By the time I get it, I've moved on to something else. So not buying BH is one of my rules for my low buy year. And I've stuck to it so far, which is great. And yeah, this palette is cute. The packaging is fun. I like the colorful mattes. I like the baked eyeshadows. I think it looks really cool and interesting, but again, I just didn't buy it because I don't really think I'll get any use out of it. But yeah, it's like one of those palettes that will always call to me just because the collectionist in me is like, oh, I got to get all three. I got to get all three. But I bought all the mini Zodiac palettes at the start of 2019. And then I like ran out of steam by the end of the year. So I learned my lesson in 2019, not buying any more BH Cosmetics in 2020 this year. So very happy about that decision that I made. And then number 11, this palette has made it into a cart, gotten out of the cart, 
back in, out, back in, out. And then she had a really good Black Friday sale too, so I really, really wanted it. It is the Dominique Cosmetics Celestial Storm Palette. I was so into this color story. I thought it was so fun. And I don't know, just something about it really like spoke to me. Um, I just liked how she like mixed the neutrals with like those colorful, like a put a shimmer blue in a palette and like my basic butt is like ready. I'm like, give it to me. But the thing that kept me away from this palette is it didn't get good reviews. I think Annette's Makeup Corner picked it up at Sephora last year and she was one of the first reviews out there. And I don't think she liked it. And I personally don't love Dominique Cosmetics formula. Like I liked her Latte palette and her Lemonade palette, but then I tried the Rustic Glam and I really didn't like it. And Berries and Cream too, I didn't love. So I've been kind of like on the fence about buying from her. A really, really sweet subscriber of mine sent me her Latte 2 palette, so that's on my list to test out to see what I think of the formula. I just, it's such a pretty palette, and I think it was like almost 40% off during Black Friday, so I was so tempted to buy it, but I was like, Karen, stay strong, like, no. So I didn't actually end up buying that one either, so yeah, it's always a palette I've always wanted to try, but I've stayed away from. And then... Bonus palette time. This one is funny because when I watched Amy's video, I think I saw on Twitter or something she said like, I actually bought one of the palettes that I ended up featuring in this video and she had bought the Natasha Denona Lilac palette. And so it was so funny because I bought this palette, the palette I'm about to show you, before I even saw Andrea's video on this subject. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I have to put this in this video because I totally forgot about it. But the palette I've wanted forever and finally picked up. And when I say forever, I've wanted this palette for a good like two to three years. <laughs> and it's this guy. It's the NYX Electric Palette. This is the what is this even called? Ultimate Multi Finish Shadow Palette. And you guys, I haven't bought a NYX palette in a hot second. You would know this if you followed me for a while. I'm definitely like a high-end palette bitch, <laughs> like seriously. And I think the last time I saw this in store was at a NYX store at the Mall of America and I didn't pick it up then. And I'm so stingy, it's so funny. I hate paying for shipping. So I looked at this on the NYX website. It was never available on Ulta's website even though this particular palette comes in different shades. So they always had the neutral one, they had a grungy one, but I always was just attracted to this color story. And then one day I was perusing target.com as I sometimes tend to do, and they have these palettes, but not in stock. So I signed up for the like notify me when item is in stock email. And I have a Target red card, so I get free shipping on target.com. And one day I was just chilling and I got an email that this palette had restocked and I was like, yes, free shipping, here I come. It was like $12.99 and so I bought it and I have it. It's so funny. I've literally wanted this for so, so long. I don't think any of you would have guessed that I would have bought that palette, but I bought it. So yeah sue me but <laughs> let me know if you guys want to see me do a look with this i wore it to work it isn't like the most pigmented palette ever but i also think i should try it with this p louise base uh, the white base and see if i can get these shadows to pop but i just thought this was such a fun color story i like how small it is and yeah it's just super duper cute so let me know if you guys have that palette or any of the palettes from that like multi finished shadow palette series because I'd be super curious to hear from you guys but that is it for my video let me know down in the comments what older palette you still have on your wish list you guys know I love hearing from you and I will catch you guys in my next video soon also PS this look is filmed it should go up if it's up already I'll link it for you otherwise subscribe it'll be live on my channel soon Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video soon. Bye!